That's why he controlled the vessels 
and some vessels can be unto honor, some can to be of dishonor, some can be vessels of mercy, some can be vessels unto destruction. Can you appreciate this God? For He had made you a vessel unto honor, a vessel unto a vessel of mercy, not a vessel unto destruction. Appreciate God tonight. Thank him for what he did in our meet last week, Tuesday. Thank him for what he said to do tonight. Let's give him glory. Let's give him honor. Let's give him adoration. He deserves to be prayed. He deserves to be adored. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' most wonderful name, we have worship. I thought somebody would say a better amen. Can you lift up your two hands to heaven? Time to ask. We are prayer of demand. And I also want you to use this opportunity to place a demand on God tonight because we are gradually getting to the climax of our waiting. And one thing that will show that you waited is the result. And I'm praying for you. Whatever are your desires, to bring them to pass. Amen. Only one person said amen. amen. So I want you to lift up your two hands and say, Father, whatever you need to do in my life for my joy to be full, oh God, my Father, go ahead and do it in my life. Lord, do it in my life. Whatever I need to do for my joy to be full. Can you go ahead and talk to the Almighty God? Whatever God needs to do in your life for your joy to be full. Physically, spiritually, financially, materially, uh, maritally, ministerially, business-wise, career-wise, occupationally. Everything God needs to do. <laughs> Whatever God needs to do for your joy to be full. Can you cry to God tonight? Can you cry to God tonight? Masapa la brande kapaka santa lima mam. Zale basuta brande. Dabaye kata brande kasuta brande kasanta li. Jile masupa la breka santa li. In Jesus, most wonderful name, we have prayed. Lift up those two hands and cry loud and cry. Say, Father. Say, Father. Before this waiting is over. Say to me quickly. Say to me on every side. Every area of my life that I need settlement. Lord, say to me. Say to me. Say to me. Say to me. Say to me financially. Say to me materially. Say to me spiritually. Say to me concerning my marriage. Say to me. I don't know the area of your life that you want God to say to you. Can you lift up your voice? He said, Ask and you shall be given. Say, Father, say to me. Lord, say to me. 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 Oh God, thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' most wonderful name, we have prayed. Last prayer point for yourself: you want to lift up your two hands and say, Father, by the time this waiting is over, let there be a significant change in every area of my life. Lord, I want to see a significant change in my spiritual life. I want to see a significant change in my prayer life, in my study life, in my occupation, in my business, in my finances, in my ministry, in the life of my children, in the life of my spouse. Lord, let there be a significant change. Are you praying for yourself at all? But then open your mouth and cry to God. Say, Lord, I want to see a significant change a significant change ah man liga bakuta brande ka santa lima ma zole gazika prada gaga daddy let there be a significant change in every area i don't want to toil anymore i don't want to be frustrated i don't want to be stagnated i don't want to know backwardness i don't want to lack i don't want to be poor lord let there be a significant change in every aspect of my life in every aspect of my family oh god arise 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 is somebody praying at all cry for a significant change 
after now you must not remain where you used to be let there be a significant change malika pala brende kasunta lima ma zege deka tabraka paka santa lea thank you mighty father in jesus most wonderful name we have prayed lift up your two hands and pray for the church and say father you can do better say father we use city of light as a point of contact at the end of this waiting wipe away the tears of all your children wipe away the tears of every member every member every member every member lord wipe away the tears wipe away the tears masuka la breka panda la la legede gazupa la bro de kasinta lima ma zika ta dipo le bale kata jegere gazuto brada that you wipe away the tears from the faces of all your children ah marika papa hear our cry wipe away the tears of your children in the name of Jesus we have prayed still one more prayer for the church after now or beginning from now let there be signs wonders and miracles in the church lift up your two hands and say father you can do better say father after now let there be signs wonders miracle in your church in the redeemed christian church of god in the body of crime let there be signs wonders and miracle that we all shall a great revival great revival in your church great revival in your church great revival in your church signs wonders and miracle in your church and in the life of every member Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Lift up your two hands as we pray for our nation. Listen to me, sir. I know and I am very confident God will intervene and end all the challenges we are facing in Nigeria. All the insecurity, every kind of thing that are unpleasant, that are happening in this land, and end we come to it. Because everything that has a beginning must have an end. A Nigeria of our dream will soon manifest. If you are in agreement with me, let your amen be loud and clear. Lift up your two hands to heaven and say, Father, intervene in our nation and put an end to all the challenges all the bombing all the banditry all the kidnapping all the insecurity all the Boko Haram attack Lord Ara Lord Ara Lord Ara intervene in Nigeria intervene in Nigeria intervene in Nigeria let there be an end an end an end an end to every challenge is uh, thank you mighty father in jesus mighty name we are praying Amen. beloved something must happen for something to happen you didn't hear me sir something must happen for something to everyone in the government that are giving evil cancer and are having sympathy for all those that are destabilizing this country, God will uproot them. Lift up your chin and say, Father, everyone in this in, in government giving evil counsel. Oh God of heaven, arise in your wrath, arise in your anger. Let them be uprooted. Lord, uproot them. We prophesy against them. Frustrate them. At the order of Ahitophel, Lord, prostrate them. Lord, frustrate them. Everyone that will not want peace in Nigeria. Everyone that will not want a change in Nigeria. Everyone that does not want things to get better in Nigeria. Lord, you know where they are. Uproot them violently. Lord, let your wrath and anger come upon them. That there may be peace in this nation. Thank you mighty father for we pray in Jesus name. Precious father we love you. You are a good God. A great God. A mighty God. A powerful God. Loving God. 
caring God, supportive God, helpful God, that they accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Thank you for what you did in our midst last week, Tuesday. Thank you for always sending your word to us timely. That we say they exalted in Jesus' name. Thank you for what you did at the VG early hour of today. Thank you for what you did in the morning at Good Morning Holy Spirit. And thank you for what you are said to do tonight. That they will return all the glory. Because we know our sacrifices will not be in vain. Because we know you will hear our cry. Even that that we are praying tonight. Lord, answer speedily in the name of Jesus. Consign our life, concerning your church, concerning our nation. Daddy, surprise us in the name of Jesus. Lord, we have come to learn at your feet. Lord, prepare our heart to be receptive to your word in the name of Jesus. Let our heart not repel your word in the name of Jesus. Mighty and everlasting Father, let me not say, oh God, what your children want to hear, but what you want them to hear. That they speak through me in the name of Jesus. Daddy, I surrender my tongue for your use, oh God, Father. Let your word come expressly in the name of Jesus. Eh? That at the end of tonight, may we all be glad that we came. Thank you, mighty Father. And as many that are still on the road, clear the road for them. As many that are weak, exchange their weakness for your strength. As many that are fainting, that they revive in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father, for we pray in Jesus' name. I told the blogger, will say a louder amen. amen and a powerful amen. amen. Jam your hands together for the King of Kings and the Lord of Law, the one who was, the one who is, the one who is to come, and make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I say, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Celebrate, 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 celebrate. I say, celebrate, 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 celebrate. Hallelujah. Let's please be seated in his presence. We are all most welcome in Jesus' name. Uh, we continue in the new series of our Digging Deep, uh, taking part two, the vessels of mercy. My prayer for every one of us is that we shall all be vessels of mercy. And of course, our text is taken from Romans chapter 9. We took verse 22 and 23 last week, but we are taking 21 to 23. Romans 9, 21 to 23. And I read, Had not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endure with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory, even all whom he had called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. May the Lord bless his reading in Jesus' name. Beloved brethren, we started looking at this topic last week. And in our study last week, we look at the types of vessel the types of vessel praise the Lord we look at the types of vessel and of course we told us that in a great house there are what hello there are what in a great house there are many vessels we have the vessel of gold, vessel of silver vessels of wood vessels of clay Praise the Lord. And we say someone to honor, someone to dishonor. We have vessels of mercy. We have vessels of destruction. Praise the Lord. And we told us that vessels are like container. They are filled with whatever content you put in them. They are filled with whatever content you put in them. And I remember demonstrating that last week Tuesday when we got a cup with a bottle of water. We use the cup as a vessel and we fill the cup with water and that's the same way God fills the vessels of honor. He fills us with his presence. He fills us with his spirit. He fills us with his power. He fills us with his grace. He fills us even with mercy. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. 
So we look at various kind of vessel. And last week, Tuesday, we also look at the impartiality of the Almighty God. That God is impartial. He sent the invitation for us all to become vessel of, of mercy. He sent the invitation out so that we can take a decision and we can make a choice. Praise the Lord. And I remember telling us last week Tuesday that if there is a prayer that you need to pray on a daily basis, it has to do with the choice you make and the decision you take. Because every day of our life, we make choices. Every day of our life, we take decisions. And the decision you take and the choices you make have a lot to do with your life. Goes a long way to determine what happens next. Praise the Lord. And I remember praying for us that we will never take wrong decision. And I told us of our Father and the Lord that we always pray for us that we always know how to do it. Praise the Lord. So out of the impartiality of the Most High God, he sent an invitation so that it is now our choice to accept that his invitation or not. How many of all remember? Are you sure you were here last week, Tuesday? Praise the Lord. And I also remember telling us that when we accept this invitation, the invitation brings us into freedom and life. The invitation brings us to what? Freedom and life. When we receive that invitation, when we accept that invitation, we are brought out of bondage. We are brought out of captivity. We are brought out of the anger of God. We are brought out of the wrath of God so that we don't incur his wrath, but rather we enjoy his mercy. And that's why we told us that vessels of mercy are full of life. Vessels of mercy are full of what? They are full of life. And that is why vessels of mercy, the Bible says they are for prepared for glory. Not eternal condemnation. Not eternal death. So, vessels of mercy are full of of life and my prayer for us is that we will all be vessels of mercy so that's where we stopped last week so we're taking the journey tonight as we just look at only two outlines the first outline says the vessels of destruction the vessels of destruction last week we actually analyzed vessels of destruction but we didn't go in details to what the vessels of destruction is, but we spend some time looking at vessels of mercy. Tonight, we want to look at the vessels of destruction. The Bible says there are vessels fitted for destruction. The vessels of wrath are fitted to destruction and fit for nothing else before they are dashed to pieces by iron rod of divine justice. Praise the Lord. Vessels of wrath. How terribly emphatic is this phrase? Vessel to be filled to the brim with that burning liquid. The rod of God is revealed against sin. It is not like human rod. It is calm, settled, and consists principally in regard to what is right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Bible made us to know that God had made his power known. He controls the pot. He is like the potter that controls the clay. And the potter can make the clay to any form he desire. So God is the potter who can make some vessel unto mercy and make some vessel unto destruction. Praise the Lord. Brethren, if you read Romans chapter 1 verse 18, he says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. You get to become vessels of destruction or, 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 or vessels of wrath when you are into ungodliness and unrighteousness. Praise the Lord. When we become disobedient to God, we position ourselves as vessels of destruction. When we are involved in ungodliness, 
when we are involved in unrighteousness, when we are disobedient to God, we are becoming vessels of destruction. If you read Colossians chapter 3 verse 6, it says, for which in sake the wrath of God comment on the children of disobedience. On the children of disobedience. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Those that are vessels of destruction can never enter into the rest of the Almighty God. They can never enter into the rest of the Almighty God. Hebrew chapter 3, verse 11. He says, So I swear in my wrong, they shall not enter into my rest. They shall not enter into my rest. Praise the Lord. I say, Praise the Lord. So, has it happened before? The answer is yes. And that's why we need to fear God. When God is talking about vessels of destruction, it is real. Don't just take it as an imaginary thing. Why? When you look at the book of Jude, you will discover that even the angels of God, who were angels of light, when they fell short of God's expectation, the wrath of God came upon them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God's wrath was the consequence of the angels also disobeying God. The first example we have is casting the angel out of heaven. Casting what? The angel out of heaven. The book of Jude made us to know that the angels which kept not their first estate. Read the book of Jude angels which kept not their first estate he had reserved in everlasting shame under darkness unto judgment of the great day and in the book of Peter we are told that, that God spared not the angels that sinned but cast them down to hell and delivered them into the shame of darkness to be reserved unto judgment praise the Lord Praise the Lord. And so, if God can even make angels vessels of destruction, how much more man? How much more man? And that is why you discover that the flood that came in the days of Noah is an example of who vessels of destruction are. In the days of Noah, when God instructed that Noah should prepare an ark, Noah also let the people know that the wrath of God is coming. But they will not listen. They will not repent. The Bible said they were into marriages. They were drinking. They were committing all manners of atrocity. Do you know that all those that were in that generation of Noah became vessels of destruction because they were destroyed by the flood. They were destroyed by what? By the flood. Read Genesis chapter 8. Read Genesis chapter 8. That is a typical example of vessels of destruction. How about Sodom and Gomorrah? How about Sodom and Gomorrah? What transpired in Sodom and Gomorrah because of the sins of the people of Sodom and Gomorrah with the session of Lot and the two daughters and the wife who also later became a pillar of salt destruction came upon Sodom and Gomorrah and all the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah are a typical example of vessels of destruction so vessels of destruction are those that are in disobedience to God those that are against the will of God those that will not obey the voice of God and so you may be positioning yourself as a vessel of destruction the moment you are into ungodly the moment you are into unrighteousness, the moment you are into disobedience, you position yourself as a vessel of destruction. So you need to know that any time you are committing sin, I repeat, any time you are committing sin, all you are doing to yourself is to make yourself a vessel of destruction. Because there is 
destruction prepared for children of disobedience. There is destruction prepared for children of disobedience. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 6. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of this thing coming the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. He says, let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Blood brethren, we need to take note of this. And my prayer is that God of heaven will help us. I say God of heaven will help us. If you read that Jude chapter 1 verse 6, he said, and the angels which keep not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he had reserved in everlasting shame unto darkness, unto the judgment of the great day. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. And if you read Psalm 7 verse 11, he said, God judges the righteous and God is angry with the wicked. How many times? Every day. Every day. God is angry with the wicked. So when you manifest heart of wickedness, you position yourself as a vessel of destruction. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you read Revelation 6, 17, he said, for the great day is of his wrath, for the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Who shall be able to stand? Look at what Peter said in 2 Peter 2 for he said, For if God spare not the angels, just like I said earlier, he said, If God spare not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell and deliver them into shades of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Angels, God did not spare them. That's why I'm praying for us. The grace to run away from sin. May the Lord release unto us in the name of Jesus. I say, may the Lord release unto us in the name of Jesus. And if you read the flood that came upon the people in the days of Noah, in that Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 to 6, say, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the air, and he grieved him at his heart. And what was the consequence? Those men became vessels of destruction. Sir, God has not changed. God has not changed. You are only a vessel of mercy when you are obedient to God, when you are in the will of God, when you are in righteousness, when you are in perfection. But the moment you compromise your faith, you shift from being a vessel of mercy onto a vessel of destruction. Onto a vessel of what? Destruction. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's read Proverbs 1, 24 to 32. He said, because I have called and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have set at naught all my counsel and will none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh, when your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a wide wind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. But for that they hated knowledge and did not show the fear of the Lord, they will. They will none of my cancer. They despise all my reproof. Therefore, shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fool shall destroy them. Brethren, can you see? Can you see? So there is only a tiny line. I repeat. What kind of line? Very tiny line, line, not light, tiny line between a vessel of mercy and a vessel of what? Destruction. The moment you cross to disobedience, you cross to unrighteousness, 
you cross to wickedness, you are already preparing yourself as a vessel of destruction. Meanwhile, when you remain in righteousness, you remain in holiness, you remain in obedience, you remain in the will of God, you are a vessel of mercy. Can you see the difference? Hello? Do I make myself clear? Is somebody following me? If I'm communicating, can you shout hallelujah? If you understand me loud and clear, can you shout another hallelujah? So, we need to know who the vessels or destructions are. They are simply children of disobedience. They are simply sinners. They are simply wicked. They are simply ungodly. They are simply unrighteous. So, once you cross over to that, you know that you are a vessel of destruction. My prayer is that none of us shall be vessels of destruction. Making know his power is our last outline as we begin to round up. Making know his power. Ah, can I pray for only one person? God will not make his power known over your life in a negative way. You know, at times we sing some song, we don't know the implication. <laughs> at times, when you are singing certain songs, you need to examine yourself to know whether you are actually in the will of God. Songs like Baba Fagbarare, Baba Fagbarare, Jackie Bobo Abaye Le Modaju Wipe Jesu Nikon Loba Lori Aye Bobo Baba Fagbara Rehon. When God show his power for a vessel of mercy, it is not the same thing as showing his power on a vessel of destruction. Hello? And you are going to see that in a short while. When God demonstrated his power against Pharaoh. Let's take the outline. Let's take the literature of the outline. He said there is one exhibition of divine power that yet remains. It is the destruction of the wicked. The reason why God has raised up Pharaoh is to show his power in them. Praise the Lord. It is plain that there must be some great power exercised in his destroying the wicked. Surely the power of God's rod is very great. Is very what? Great. That is why when God was talking to Abraham in Genesis 71, he said, walk before me and be that what? Perfect. Without blame. Because if you have not, when you deviate, you are looking for trouble. You are looking for what? For trouble. Because God has power. The same power that he has to say, let there be light. According to Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, let there be light and there was light. The same power he also exhibited when his anger and wrath come upon the children of disobedience. Praise the Lord. Because the Bible says in that Psalm 33 verse 9, he said, for he speak and it was done. He commanded and he stood fast. He did what? He speak and it was what? Done. He commanded and he stood fast. Praise the Lord. The same power is the same power that God uses against vessels of destruction. Praise the Lord. If you read Isaiah 63, verse 3, he said, I have trodden the wind, the, the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me, for I will tread them in my anger. I'll do what? I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garment, and I will stain all my raiment. When God decides to be angry, <laughs> nothing can stop him. And that is why we all need to be reminded that hell is real. Many of us still say, oh, but God is merciful. Just like we have our team for this month. 
How will God destroy the people like that? Brethren, the days of Noah, Sodom and Gomorrah are a typical example for us to know that hell is real. And when God decides to carry out his anger upon the vessels of destruction, when he decides to show forth, to make his power known, he cannot be stopped. That time, no more mercy. No more mercy. In the case of Noah, like we told her last week today, he himself went and locked the door. He locked the door. Because he knew Noah may want to be compassionate when his friend, his family member, his relatives are knocking at the door and he go and open. But God locked it himself. And you begin to wonder, is it not the same merciful God? Is it not the same merciful God? How come that the whole earth was destroyed with flood? Is to let you know that this God can make known his power as he will. As what? He will. As he will. That's why he's sovereign. That is why we reference the sovereignty of God. That's why he's unquestionable. He's unquestionable. The Bible says he does as he do what? He pleases. Nobody can query him. Nobody can question him. That's why he's God. That's why he's God. He make know his power when he wish to. And when he does that, anything can happen. When he made know his power against Pharaoh, he was drowned in the Red Sea. Then you now ask, when God was killing the firstborn of Israel, why did he not kill Pharaoh there? At least if he had killed Pharaoh at once, that night, after the communion, you would not have been able to pursue them. Am I correct? But you see this God, <laughs> he killed out the firstborn, speared this Pharaoh, and Pharaoh would have been thinking, okay, <laughs> unknown that the way he will make his power known, he dealt with, 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 with Pharaoh in a way that they could not find his call for burial. He was not given a state burial. Hello? You know when a dignitary dies, what happened? They give a state barrier. You saw what happened in Ghana recently when one of their ex-president, Jerry Rollins, died. You saw how the barrier went. You saw all the guns salute. They couldn't do that for Pharaoh. He drowned in the sea and God made him a food to fish. Can you imagine? Crabs were the one eating the eyes of Pharaoh. Inside water, crabs were eating his eyes. Were scraping. His, oh my God! May we not see the anger of God. Only one person said, "Amen." amen. Revelation eighteen eight. He said, "Therefore, shall her play come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly born with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. Who not fall into the judgment of God's hand." And Matthew 10 20 say, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. What makes a lot of us commit sin is because we fear the one that can kill only the body and cannot kill the soul. Because of that, many of us we fall into a lot of temptation we fall into a lot of disobedience because of fear of man. We, are, we forget that there is one that can kill both the body and the soul. Conclusion. Brethren, will it not be fearful to see God put out his power upon the wicked? To see him upholding them with one hand and pouring out his rod upon them with the other? It's a question. What kind of vessel do you want to be? Of mercy or of destruction? Like we said last week, the choice is yours. When God decides to make his power known, nothing can withstand 
his power shall we rise oh maybe before we rise do we have any question any question or questions any question or questions shall we rise you want to take two prayer points very quickly first lift up your two hands and appreciate the almighty God give God praise give God adoration the reason why God is sending this word to us is so that we don't end up the way we are not supposed to end up there are certain things that when we know it creates fear in us to behave ourselves just lift up your hand and say father I thank you thank you because I will never be a vessel of destruction thank you because I will forever be a vessel of mercy go ahead talk to the almighty God talk to the almighty God give God praise give God adoration thank him for who he is and for all he has done Mazoleba tali brande kasan tali ma kashin tali gabrande kete gabrande kasun tali ma kasan tali. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Two prayer points. Lift up your twin and say, Father. Say, Father. All the days of my life, make me a vessel of mercy. Do not allow me enter into destruction. Can you lift up your hands and lift up your voice and say, Father, only you, only you, only you. The Bible says, it's not by mind, it's not by power. He said, he that thinketh that he stand, he said, let him take key, lest he fall. Don't say, oh, I am righteous. Oh, I am holy. Oh, I am perfect. It can never happen to me. Nothing like that. It takes the mercy of God. So cry to the Almighty God that you will never be a vessel of destruction. You will never be a vessel of destruction. You will never be a vessel of destruction. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Finally, lift up your train and say, Father, if we ever make your power known in my life say loud and clear father if you will ever make your power known in my life let it never be unto destruction let it be unto blessing let it be unto lifting let it be unto promotion let it be unto eternal life go ahead if god will ever make his power known in your life let it be unto eternal life let it not be unto condemnation let it not be unto his anger let it not be unto his wrath go ahead talk to the almighty god Right now, let's stretch our hands to our pastor. Let's ask that the Lord will continually make him a vessel unto mercy and not a vessel of destruction in the name of Jesus. That the Lord will continually use him for his glory, that he will not be a, a vessel unto destruction. That he will bless him, he will help him, he will bless his family, he will bless everything that concerns him. And the next time we hear from him, we'll hear good news concerning him in Jesus' name. He shall be well with him and with everything that concerns him in Jesus' name. Let us pray for him right now in Jesus name Father we just want to thank you for the our pastor we ask that you continually make him a vessel of mercy a, and not a vessel of destruction in Jesus name Father we ask that Lord you continually fill him with your power in the name of Jesus that you continue to proclaim your word at all times without fear or favor in the name of Jesus thank you Father because you have done it for in Jesus mighty name we are free praise the Lord it's suffering time. Please let's put our hands in our purses and our pockets and give a worthy offering unto the Lord with a cheerful heart. Oh, 
to the following announcements. Tonight, the 21 days video continues virtually. Yesterday was awesome in God's presence. Please let's endeavor to join the video tonight through the Facebook, the radio, and every social pl uh, media uh, platform. And the Lord will bless you as you do in Jesus' name. Then Good Morning Holy Spirit continues tomorrow through to Friday. We are still holding Good Morning Holy Spirit. It's not yet. It's not cancelled for this week. So it still holds tomorrow morning. Then in the evening, we have our fellowship at the various out fellowship centers. So anyone that is near you, you can check the back of the bulletin for the house fellowship that is closest to you. And as you go, the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. So tomorrow night also, the video continues for to, to finish about the 21st, on the 21st day of the, at the end of the video. Praise the Lord. Then on Thursday, we have Faith Clinic by 6.30 p.m. So we, we can never get tired of praying. We've come here to pray until something happens. And as we come, the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Then on Saturday is Evangelism evangelism is not for workers alone it's for every member of the church so we encourage everyone to be part of the evangelism to go out and win souls for the lord and as you do the lord will bless you in jesus name then on sunday we have our services old the three services the first one by 7 30 a.m the second by 9 a.m the third one by um 11 a.m Anyone you are able to attend, please do and please come promptly. Praise the Lord. Please let's rise up as we share the grace in fellowship. The grace in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and i shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen praise the lord